Thank you. We're probably a bit of an anomaly um, throughout the 50 states because we have a single school system for the entire state. We're an island, island state, obviously. And I think some of the other uh, non-contiguous states can, uh, Alaska and Guam and others can, uh, can relate uh, to that. Uh, we, uh, the big thing we, we had to do is, and I'm not quite sure how it works with everybody else, is get to an appointed board, um, an elected board. Um, they're looking for election. Uh, the appointed board, I got to make all the appointments. So as long as I was getting blamed for everything, I thought I ought to have the opportunity to appoint the people to, to uh, give them a good reason to blame me. And uh, uh, that has worked. Very, and then I, bring, I brought the superintendent, and we have a single superintendent. We have uh, um, uh, complex uh, uh, leaders and so on, but a, a single superintendent for the entire system as well. I bring into the, into the cabinet meetings. I had the su support of the teachers union when I ran because of this, and this is probably a good lesson. Everybody be careful what you wish for, because they got me. And uh, so there's now an imposed contract in, in Hawaii, uh, because uh, what we put in this, this board, which doesn't have to worry about politics, provided policies on educator effectiveness, teacher and principal performance evaluation, recruitment, employment, retention, termination, compensation, and classification policy. Uh, I built them all into the contract that, that we offered. I helped to put together the collective bargaining law in Hawaii. So when you're around four decades in politics, you know, everything comes around to get you. <laughs> um, uh, we have an evaluation system to cultivate I think, uh, and, and nurture uh, highly effective teachers. Um, we have a mentoring program, a new policy where new teachers participate in a mentoring uh, program, a Hawaii teacher induction program standards. Um, we're uh, re reallocated significant uh, uh, Title II funds to our complex area. Complex is a regional area, uh, five or six elementary schools, uh, middle schools, and the high schools in the, in the, in the regions. Uh, that, that we have uh, uh, throughout the different islands. The standards establish a, a common bar for quality. We have, we've introduced core, core curriculum standards, uh, require all first and second year teachers to receive this mentoring professional growth. Uh, the, uh, uh, we're piloting uh, an educator effectiveness system. How do you take all that stuff and make it work? So we, we, we are piloting through, we have about 250 schools. Uh, we have a performance evaluation for teachers and administrators at, at, at about one third of the public schools right now, 2,500 teachers, uh, dozens of administrators, complex area staff are all participating in it at the present time. All principals are transitioned to a new performance based evaluation system based on student outcomes and best practices for principals. Um, all of this is underway right now, and it is all being fought tooth and nail by the, by the leadership of the teachers' union. Um, uh, uh, well, and I helped to form the first teachers' union. I was a member of the executive board of the, of the, of the uh, first union in, in, uh, in uh, the university. So I've been, I've been an executive board member of the AFL-CIO. Uh, uh, so I've, I've been on uh, uh, negotiated contracts uh, myself, so it, it, it is a very, very difficult proposition uh, for us to see that. The teachers are buying into it. Um, they, uh, the students are buying into it. So uh, my bottom line on that is uh, very quickly that the question here is, is whether you have institutional uh, inertia that, uh, particularly in a collective bargaining context, that cannot get to some of the bigger pr issues of principle that have been enunciated here today. I think we're doing that. I think the teachers are in it. The parents want to do it. The kids are responding. The problem is, is, is that uh, at the present time, at least in my context, then, uh, a statewide contract uh, has, has not yet been uh, able to be achieved. Uh, and when I, uh, we achieved it at, at, at the negotiating level, but uh, uh, we haven't been able to get uh, the board of the union to get it out to their membership. So um, um, if push comes to shove, then we'll have to continue to impose the contract and, and take it up at that point. With all those things that I just mentioned that have been covered here today, 
Uh, I have a, a, a couple of uh, just very quick points that I'd like us to consider. This is what I'm finding right now. We haven't spent much time today talking at all about class differentiation. Uh, we talk about compensation. I was a probation officer at one time in, in my career. I got paid the same for whether I was doing traffic tickets or murder, uh, and I've done all of that. Um, uh, it, 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 if you start getting into compensation differentiation, you're getting on a very slippery slope very, very quickly. Because if you go to a school like I did just last week, where 87% of the kids are on free lunch uh, because they're, uh, they're uh, in an area of, of economic chaos and, and social dysfunction in their families, uh, fifth grade class, uh, up through the fifth grade, um, first to fifth grade elementary school, by the time some of those kids are in fifth grade, they've had four uncles in their house, uh, maybe more. Uh, what we call, I mean, Governor Kelville smiling, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they, uh, th those kids uh, have a very difficult time, single, uh, two-thirds single parents, uh, if they have parents or they're being raised by their gra grandmas and grandpas. Um, uh, but I went, I went to that school. Every single child in, in the school now through those fifth grade has a laptop and a, uh, uh, or, or, or a, uh, a tablet, which, which we've done. Uh, every single one. They've been passed out since October. The, the, they, they have not lost a single one. Those kids cling to those laptops. That's, that they can control. That they, they understand. And that they can do. The teachers can work with the kids that are having trouble in the back. Every kid, you go by every classroom there, and every kid is focused and uh, 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 learning. They're not looking around the room. Every child is happy. My point here is that um, this is, we've had business and foundations giving us the money to do this. I think if there's going to be a national education, and we've talked about flexibility here and getting uh, things done from the federal government, if there's going to be a federal department of education, regardless of our ideological views, if there's going to be one, then let them do something useful. Let the Congress do something useful. Make sure that every single school child, particularly in the elementary school, two things happen, that we have preschool and early childhood development, and that every single child in, in elementary school and, and middle school gets a laptop and a, uh, and a or, 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 uh, uh, tablet uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, the teachers that, that, that can handle it, and they're going to make a huge difference. I believe that. I think it overcomes class differences and overcomes a lot of things. So um, uh, that's, that's, that's the principal thing, is to overcome institutional inertia when it comes to negotiating contracts um, so that we don't have uh, this, uh, where the children get lost in the, in, the, uh, in the discussion. And the second thing is to have the, uh, the technological capacity that exists now uh, not turn into a digital divide that will, will, will create a permanent uh, uh, bifurcation of uh, 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 capacities to, uh, for young children to be able to utilize all their abilities um, and, and all the talent that they have. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, uh, Governor Fowler.